So usually the question goes, how do I make a 12 volt lithium battery? And I'm like, mm, I don't know. But that changes today because today I'm gonna show you how to make this 12 volt lithium battery. Let's get started. So here is the 12 volt lithium challenge. 12 volts are generally automotive lead acid batteries. They have been around forever and they are achieved by using six two volt cells inside of a box with two big terminals. They are cheap, they are heavy, and they don't last very long in energy storage applications. Now lithium on the other hand, they are expensive, but they are light, small, and they last a very long time. The problem is that the most common type of lithium has an operating cell voltage of 3.7 volts and using three or four cells doesn't quite match the 12 volt standard. So no matter how many you use, you end up wasting about 30% of the capacity to mismatch voltage. But there is one type of lithium chemistry that operates at a 3.3 volt nominal and putting four cells in series makes a 12 volt that is compatible with 99% of all the equipment out there designed for lead acid batteries. That of course is LiPo4 or lithium iron phosphate. It's an old chemistry that it's not as energy dense or as power dense as the most popular lithium cobalt oxide type of cells. But what it lacks on density, it makes up in safety as it's almost impossible to make one of these cells catch fire and cycle life as they are commonly rated in the 2000 to 5000 cycles to 80 percent state of charge which translates to many many years of operation now traditionally these have been really expensive but every day we are finding more and more sources of lightly used secondhand overstock repurposed cells and it so happens that right now batteryhookups.com a recycler and a retailer of lithium cells in the usa has a lot of lipo 4 headway cells at really good prices so we are going to use these to build our very own 12 volt lithium battery that hopefully will come in around half the price of a commercially available one so here are all the parts that you will need. They are all listed in the description of this video. All right, so the first thing you have to do, you're gonna grab one of these plates. You're gonna cut it in half, right? I'd say you make a mark about a quarter inch and then you use another one of these plates and then you mark it like this. Then you do the same thing on this side. You'll use some of these. There we go. So now you have three plates plus one that's cut in half. Now you start assembling your batteries okay one very important thing here do not connect these backwards and whatever you do do not short these cells each one on a dead short can do about 300 amps times eight that equals a very bad time unless you're looking to melt stuff then it would be a really good time with fireworks and all but you probably don't want that so do not short these all right Carry on with the build. Here I'm using some Captain tape between the four separate groups of cells to further prevent a short between them. The only thing here preventing said short is one thin layer of cell wrapper. So anything you can do is very helpful. And there we go. There's our battery pack right there. So you need to go negative positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And to better understand how this works, here is a visual diagram of how the entire battery is going to be wired. All right, now that we tested and everything works, it's time to put it in its box. Mm. we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut off some of these plastic here so that we can embed this thing further down in there to allow room for the batteries to be there right so we gotta cut all this plastic So here's what I did. I added cardboard 
in between these cells because remember if the covering here or the shrink uh, wrapped on any of the cells if they were to you know wear off or whatever and they were to touch adjacent cells here then that would be a short uh, same thing here and also in between here but here they are kind of separated by the screws here everything is tight here it was just this was kind of floating and stuff and so that's the reason I'm putting isolators there so that we prevent shorts. charging it for the first time. This is a 12 volt computer power supply. Then I'm using one of these guys. Constant current, constant voltage, uh, two stage uh, DC to DC, but it's made to charge batteries. And then here I have a meter I'm charging at 18 amps. So about 240 watts uh, charging the battery. I think it'll stop at around 13.6. That's when the battery is completely charged. Okay, after a couple of hours, this stopped charging. The charging is zero. If I increase the voltage here, it doesn't charge. So that means the BMS actually stopped and disconnected the battery, right? So the cells are probably overcharged, right? Because this one, I, I wasn't checking out to see what the voltage, but at 14.7, yeah, each cell is about 3.66 so that's about the upper range of the cells that you want to hit so yeah this battery pack it's fully charged now we can discharge it put it through its paces all right testing the battery turning on this guy there we go 41 amps on that battery so this is supposed to do 200 amps continuous Do 50 but I think that was the uh, that was this thing okay so we actually maxed out the, this not the battery so there we go two kilowatts off of a two kilowatt uh, inverter let's see how that battery does there There you go, at full continuous power of 200 amps, this battery will give you 400 watt hours. At 12 volts, that's about 35 amp hours. Now, if you were to use it at 50% loads, then you'll get around 700 watt hours or 60 amp hours. Now let's look at how it did thermally. So the terminal was around 65 degrees. Look at that, it was about 60 degrees in, inside there. This is where it connects to the pack. And then this is where it connects to the pack. So those two connections are heating up, right? But of course this is running the battery at 100. So that's the idea of what, uh, of what we're gonna get. All right, time to see how well we did cost-wise. First, 32 of the battery hookups headweight cells come in at $336, the BMS at $96.73, the battery box at $52, bus bars, the custom aluminum ones, $39.99, and then there's another $20 of miscellaneous cables and stuff. Comes to a grand total of $544. So that's what it takes to build a lithium 12 volt battery replacement. 
All right, so I hope you have enjoyed this build. If you are interested in any of the components I use here, they are listed in the description down below. Now, I'm actually giving away this battery I just built. All you have to do is go to my 300,000 subscriber giveaway video and comment there. I wanna thank batterhookups.com for sponsoring this build. And I wanna thank you for watching and for finally subscribing. It was about time. I mean, you already watch all my video. Just click the button. Go ahead, just do it. With that, I say thank you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.